On behalf of the Honorable Deputy Minister, I would like to thank all the in our national, Mr. Harold Bank, for, your, for honoring our investigative officer, able body and all other facilitators of this event. Finally, the Council. Of Ghana National Chamber of Pharmacy. Do in the name of the Almighty God swear that I will be faithful and true to the Ghana National Chamber of Pharmacy, that I will at all times preserve, protect, and support the Constitution the laws and the policies of the Ghana National Chamber of Pharmacy and that I dedicate myself to the service and well-being of the Chamber. I further solemnly swear that during my term I will faithfully and impartially Discharge the responsibilities of the office to the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. I further solemnly swear. I further solemnly swear that I sh that should I that should I at any time at any time break this oath of office. Break this oath of office. I shall submit to the ethics. The and Judiciary Affairs Committee, and Judiciary Affairs Committee of Chamber of Pharmacy of Ghana, to help me God. So so God. God. Congratulations. Thank you. Can this stay? To the glory of God. Amen. And we declare the five-year strategic plan. Thank you very much.
I wish to say that the government, with support from the private sector, is gradually taking giant step to making Ghana a world-class musical manufacturing hub in the sub-region, capable of locally producing and supplying high-quality, affordable, safe, and efficacious medicines for domestic and export markets, including taking advantage of the opportunities presented by the African continental free trade area. The pound sterling, 450, the equivalent of Ghana cities, 3.3 billion, covering activities, 3.3 million, sorry, covering activities over a 17 month period to deliver the above recent interventions was granted to the Chamber. So far, seven companies have benefited from the grant to assist them breach the gaps in production created due to vulnerabilities in supply chain. We wished more grantees had benefited for more impact. We are therefore putting in place capacity building proposals for farmer industry to improve the chances of future applicants. The FCDO support also led to the procurement of ultra-modern ICT equipment, including video conferencing facilities related to administering the grant and other advocacy efforts in line with COVID-19 social distance protocols. The fund is further supporting the Chamber in the establishment of pharmaceutical enclave and a special purpose vehicle, SPV, which will position Ghana as a pharmaceutical manufacturing hub in West Africa. This indeed is a very important support that the British government through FCTO has given the Chamber and they must be applauded for this. We trust that other governments will follow the good example and make such grants available to Chamber. A special event will be organized later to highlight the challenges and the successes, the successes chopped by the FCDO program. Suffice to state here now that the Ghana National Chamber of Pharmacy is most grateful to Madam Nana from Palmer Ayan, FCDO Private Sector Development Advisor, and her able program team for their patience, support, and that the Chamber has entered into a memorandum of understanding with LMI Holdings Limited, a local company that manages Dawa Industrial Enclave for the establishment of a one-stop shop, pharma park, and a special purpose vehicle. This industrial enclave has a dedicated ultra-modern 330 kV ECG power substation, one of the largest in West Africa, and is already built within the enclave with access to ultra-fast fiber broadband internet and data facilities. A railway branch connection from Tema to Akonsobo is currently under construction. This will facilitate the movement of goods to and from Tema and the Volta Lake transport system. Asphalted or paved block roads and other drainage systems are ongoing. The Chamber envisioned to have at least 15 pharmaceutical companies established on, in this enclave in the next five years. And the road to and from the enclave will be dualized to eliminate the current heavy traffic at this part of Accra to Sukhakope Road. FCDU again funded and contracted a prominent Ghanaian legal firm, Kimazi and Partners, to work on the former enclave and the SPV proposals. 
distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the five-year strategic plan that is being launched today has been developed through a consultative process involving players within the pharma sector and our external stakeholders. It has been subjected to vigorous validation in the spirit of leaving no one behind and in, in order to ensure exclusivity in the implementation of the outlined strategies. A committee of the chamber who finalized the strategic plan led by Dr. Charles Fojo must be commended for their untiring effort to finish the plan on time for this launch. I suggest, ladies and gentlemen, that future donor partners support and approve an in-house proposal or in-house proposals from chamber committees so that we can build capacity and also earn some income for the chamber. On my behalf and on behalf of the chamber, we commit to actively implement this strategic plan and provide the required leadership and guidance. Together, we will build a vibrant and responsive pharmaceutical sector. As I draw to the end of my welcome address, I want to make clear the chamber position on a burning issue of government budget proposals. That is the removal of Benjamin value on pharmaceuticals. We wish to state that such a withdrawal is likely to increase prices of imported pharmaceuticals between 30 to 50 percent. At the moment, Ghana produces only 30 percent of pharmaceuticals locally and imports 70 percent finished pharmaceuticals. It might be noted that imported pharmaceuticals are not locally manufactured and therefore do not pose a threat to the local manufactured pharmaceuticals. Chamber regularly monitors the situation with PMAC and as and when FDA is satisfied that local manufacturers have the capacity to manufacture these any of these products locally, the restricted list be reviewed to accommodate these additions. Pharmaceuticals are not products of common commerce.